front of me, but it's not as um, as easy as I thought it was going to be. Right, so today we have quite a full agenda, so we just want to uh, get through um, as quickly as possible questions. Um, in, if possible, could you please write your uh, partai or corridor um, notifying us in the chat? The hands up gets a bit confusing um, going back and forth. If you do a hands up, we'll follow that up too, but just I prefer to follow an order through the chat if that's okay. Um, if you feel like it and if you've got the internet available, please use your um, cameras when uh, speaking to everyone. And we will try to do go through every presentation without interruption and then do questions at the end. I think that's the easiest. Um, there are a bit of a theme of the first three uh, items, obviously around water. The water strategy is a broad uh, long-term strategy which is the high level direction. And then we have too much water uh, policy and the shoreline adaptation plan for Whangapuroa, which are all, uh, all uh, connected. So it's quite good to have the sort of cascading three together. And so we'll jump straight to um, the final adoption of the Auckland water strategy. And I think we have Toby and Jacques on the line. I assume Toby is taking the lead here. Uh, kia ora, chair, thank you. Um, what I'll do is I'll just um, set up my uh, slideshow here uh, and then we'll get underway. Um, race through the agenda and I don't have my slideshow ready. Uh, apologies, everybody. <laughs> here we are. Um, kia ora tato. Um, just to acknowledge the Chair and Deputy, uh, Mr Mayor, hope you're feeling better soon. Um, committee uh, members, councillors and MSP members, um, welcome. Uh, today uh, on your agenda we have the adoption of the Auckland Water Strategy. Uh, this is the uh, final uh, step in adopting that strategy. Members will remember that we last saw you in December 2021 where we endorsed the core content of the final document that you're seeing here today. Um, just before I do start, um, it's me that presents these things, um, but I just want to acknowledge our co-lead, Georgina Hart from Natural Environment Strategy, who is away on uh, parental leave. Um, and then I also want to acknowledge um, the project uh, leads, the work stream leads, um, Greer Lees, who's the Acting Manager of Infrastructure Strategy, Simon Fraser and Brendan Judd, who are Senior Analysts in the Natural Environment Strategy. Uh, and they're available and on the call today, should we need to answer any questions. Uh, and then just acknowledge everyone else who's contributed to the water strategy um, over its development. Um, water Care, AT, Pānuku, uh, the Secretariat for the uh, Tamaki Makoto uh, Mana Whenua Forum, um, Te Pau Taiao members and, and Chair Nicola McDonald in particular. Um, a lot of effort has gone into um, what we've uh, arrived at here today. And just to acknowledge everybody um, who's, who's helped us there. Um, also acknowledging our Matauranga advisors, Emily Afor and Johnny Freeland. So just um, wanted to make sure I make that acknowledgement before we um, move on. Uh, so the first slide that we have here, if I just, here we go. Um, so this is the timeline for the water strategy you should be seeing. We've seen the slide before a number of times, each time progressing uh, further through the timeline. Uh, so the water strategy, really has its genesis in that um, 2017, uh, Section 17A Value for Money review. We had the public discussion document. The public gave its feedback on uh, the vision, values, and strategic direction of, of that discussion document. We came away with Te or or Tiwai, the vision for the water strategy. Uh, since then, we've adopted some consumption reduction targets last year, and we're already making progress uh, investing and working on uh, policies and programs that will further those. Uh, staff then workshopped the strategy uh, with the Environment and Climate Change Committee uh, towards the end of last year. Local board chairs were also uh, invited to those workshops. Uh, and then in December, we adopted the core content. We had three resolutions. Uh, the first was adopting the framework um, of the water strategy. The second was endorsing the content. So the, um, the text descriptions, um, the vision, aims, challenges, actions, and so forth. Uh, and the third resolution 
was just a noting resolution that staff might refine uh, the odd action and refine uh, the content, refine the core content for that um, final publication, which is uh, attachment A on your agenda today. Uh, since that December meeting, we've shared the core content and presented to local boards. They've had their uh, business meetings throughout February and we've received um, their resolutions and feedback. Uh, that is attached, that is attachment C to um, the agenda report today. Staff have taken on board that feedback. We're preparing responses uh, to some of the requests for further information and clarity. We've addressed uh, some of that feedback in the final document that you see as attachment A today. Um, probably most notably a page describing uh, the shared governance model here at Auckland Council, um, which was uh, in a number of local boards feedback. So we were happy to accommodate that and, and provide that page. That page is probably the more substantial change that uh, the, the committee members will see from the version that was shared with committee members for feedback on the 21st of February. Um, so that brings us to today, adoption uh, in March, as you see on the screen. So I just wanted to almost take us back right to the start and just revisit um, why did the council uh, create this strategy? Um, I'll just make sure that's still presenting. It is not. Just trying to navigate to my uh, slides. It was uh, until my... you said... Yeah, no, my mistake. Just trying to get to my notes. Quite hard working with a paperless office. <laughs> um, not to worry. So the, why did we create a strategy? Well, really, three key reasons. Um, change is needed. We have um, identified core challenges within the strategy um, that relate to the need to produce one. And these are around uh, protecting and enhancing the health of water bodies and ecosystems, providing uh, enough water to meet our needs into the future, um, better partnering with mana whenua, um, and working together um, as council uh, in a more coordinated fashion. These challenges are what the water strategy responds to and why we arrive with the strategic direction that we do. Um, change is also required. We're seeing central government direction for more integrated management um, and particularly improved partnership uh, with uh, mana whenua. And these key themes are reflected in the strategy uh, that you've been presented with and that we've workshopped. And the last key driver for a strategy is that change is possible. Um, Council has a really broad role when it comes to water outcomes in the delivery of services, functions, regulation and, and uh, community activity. Uh, and Council pl plans to spend a significant amount of water, uh, amount of money in this area on water outcomes um, over the 30 year lifetime of the strategy. And that spend and particularly that activity and the ways that we work over the lifetime of the strategy uh, can be directed um, by a document such as this, um, and uh, the strategy represents that opportunity to provide that strategic direction. So just the next couple of slides uh, describe that strategic direction. So the vision of the water strategy, te Modi o te wai o tāmaki makoto, or the life-supporting and life-sustaining capacity of Auckland's water is protected and enhanced. Um, so Really, this is honing on, on the concept of Modi, which is an intuitive concept. It's one um, that I think everyone can feel as they walk past a, uh, a river that's um, healthy and well, and they, they then themselves feel healthy and well. Uh, and of course, the opposite is true when we, uh, when we are near water um, that isn't doing so well. Uh, this was a concept that was supported during public feedback and praised during the iwi engagement that we undertook as part of the discussion document and more recently as part of the strategy development. And really this vision is about uh, the life in and sustained by water doing well uh, and it causes and commits council to prioritise the well-being of water in its decision making. It's about strengthening our relationship to water um, across the region. So with that vision in place, what the water strategy does is it establishes eight key strategic shifts. So just coming up on the screen now. So these are really eight areas of change. They're identified by staff across the council um, as key uh, directions um, in order to change the way that the council group approaches achieving water outcomes. So they're on, on the screen now. Um, Te Tiriti Partnership, Empowering Aucklanders, uh, sustainable allocation and equitable access, regenerative water infrastructure, water security through abundance, 
integrated land use and water planning, uh, restoring and enhancing water ecosystems. Uh, and then a last shift there around pooling knowledge and paying particular attention to the way that the group coordinates uh, and um, collaborates to deliver these outcomes. Each of these strategic shifts has a stated aim and the water strategy clearly explains what we mean by that aim. And then we also identify uh, a number of challenges um, that impede progress towards that aim and need to be addressed um, throughout the period of the water strategy. The strategic shifts also have uh, around six uh, key nearer term actions that are identified uh, and the implementation plan which was circulated to the committee uh, at the same time as the full document on the 21st of Feb, goes into a little more detail about what those actions are. Uh, those actions are designed to lay the foundation for change, to begin the strategic shift, if you like. Uh, and, and the architecture of the water strategy is also designed uh, to be added to. So as we make progress against those actions, we may identify more actions over time that deliver the strategic shifts. So they're designed to stay constant. And then as we make progress, uh, we'll be identifying and, and adding to the actions. So, that, and that's really the, the core of the water strategy. So as we progress on these strategic shifts, Aucklanders will begin to see some changes. And this slide just summarizes some of those changes. So empowering Aucklanders to, to strengthen their connection to water and blue spaces, uh, as well as being involved in and understand decision-making surrounding water. Um, they'll see a council that takes decisions that prioritise. Just getting a little bit of feedback. Someone might have a mic on. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Um, they'll see a council uh, that makes and takes decisions that prioritise water. Um, they'll see healthier ecosystems through a catchment management approach, greater access to blue green spaces, including for swimming and food gathering. A stronger partnership approach with mana whenua. It's the first strategic shift in our strategy. Water sensitive urban areas and an, and an enhanced role of water in placemaking. So making room for water and putting water um, into um, the way that we design, develop and kind of experience Auckland. Uh, and lastly, greater water efficiency across Auckland, preparing uh, for um, climate change and, and, and rising demand uh, when we think about water consumption. So th these are some of the outcomes that we'll see as we make progress against the strategy. We are already making progress on some of the actions uh, and some of the strategic direction within the strategy. So a few examples are on the screen here. We, uh, because of the timing of when we adopted the targets for water consumption reduction last year, we were able to reflect those into the long-term plan. Uh, and so we are already beginning to invest for greater water efficiency and the programs that support those uh, targets of reducing per capita demand over time. Um, we're partnering with Te Pau uh, to develop the Matauranga Māori uh, benchmarking framework. There's more information on that uh, in the strategy itself. It's a really exciting opportunity to kind of pair a Matauranga Māori uh, benchmarking framework and lens um, against an international model, which we've also completed. And that was the water sensitive cities framework uh, that we used to inform the strategy and that we've had a, a workshop session on. There are deliberative democracy trials underway at Watercare, empowering Aucklanders to understand source selection and the way we think about the decisions that Watercare makes. Um, we're partnering with Mana Whenua through the NPSFM development, embedding those core concepts of Te Mauri o Te Wai and the government's direction around Te Mano o Te Wai. We have strategic approaches to sediment aimed at reducing runoff. There's position statements around those too much water events, which are on the agenda, as the chair mentioned. So lots underway already that's embedding the strategic direction of the strategy. So just want to draw attention almost to uh, a bit of process here. Um, this is attachment B um, on your agenda today, uh, members of the committee. So you'll remember we noted in December um, that we might make minor changes to the actions um, and then also kind of produce the, the final document. We've identified those minor changes. We pop them in as uh, attachment B on your agenda. Um, there are a number of small changes um, to actions. Um, there's a largely around just further investigation of the timeframes that are going to be required uh, to deliver um, the scale of action identified. Uh, and then we also updated a, a couple of actions to um, note that they are underway, um, whereas we hadn't listed them as underway in the December vision. 
um, and as I say, summarised in attachment B. Uh, and then we also wanted to draw attention to the way that we've addressed local board feedback in the final version. Um, just want to make a point, the local boards, uh, we shared the core content, which we had at the time um, during December. It was the version that the committee uh, endorsed. Um, and so we were able to make a number of changes um, that accommodated local board feedback uh, in the in the writing of the strategy. Um, so that was that was useful. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, key change um, is the explanation of the shared governance model and trying to draw out the key uh, roles that the governing body and then the local boards have in relation to progressing the outcomes in the water strategy. So making that a little clearer um, up front, page uh, five or six in the water strategy. Um, we've also um, added some, there were some great suggestions by the local boards in terms of how local boards may be um, of help and, and, and improve the outcome um, of specific actions. And so we uh, made sure to include those bits of detail uh, in, the, uh, in the detail within the implementation plan um, for those actions. Um, in many cases, that was around the wealth of knowledge that local boards have and their ability to represent community views on actions that would be taking place at that local level. Um, and so that was really useful to hear and, and we made sure we reflected that. Uh, the uh, And as I mentioned earlier, the full resolutions from the business meetings uh, throughout February are attachment C on your agenda. So just to make sure that committee members are aware of the process um, that's happened since we saw you last uh, when you endorsed uh, the, the core content and adopted the framework. And uh, really, that brings me to a close. Um, the next steps, um, should the water strategy be adopted uh, at today's meeting, uh, publishing it on the council website, um, and we'll be um, publishing some supporting documents as well. We've, we've listed those in the committee paper, um, and they're designed um, to make sure that an interested reader um, has access to some wider information to, to support the, uh, the delivery of the strategy. Um, really excited to have brought this to you today. Um, I uh, hope to be of help answering any questions, and as I say, uh, the leads are on the line as well. Um, so looking forward to taking some questions. Kia ora. Thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Kia ora, Toby, and thank you so much. And I'm glad you acknowledged um, as many of the team as you could. I was going to start naming them, um, but thought it was safer for you to do so. Thank you for doing that, because um, <laughs> I know that can be tricky, but I know that uh, the team has done a fantastic job on this, and it was a lot of a lot of work um, that has gone on in a in a fairly short time. The last couple of months of last year, I'll um, I'll just move the resolution that's there, and Councillor um, Coom, uh, Deputy Chair, would like to second. It's placed um, here. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll acknowledge um, Councillor Coom for steering the 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 workshops and the the final committee last year that when I was away um, and Councillor Cooper for being so involved throughout the process too as a water care liaison, especially for the um, targets and things we had done in those first meetings around consumption targets and things which are very important to the overall strategy. So thank you, Linda, as well, and the water care team. Um, now we'll just move to part I. We have Councillor Cooper first. Thank you. And thank you, Toby, and all the team. This is a huge amount of work and all the local board feedback. I guess for me, I really want to address that elephant in the room that in spite of all our amazing aspirations, and I think they're achievable, I think we can do all of this, is that we won't be in control of this anymore, unfortunately. Um, and so a lot of this for me is a bit sad. Um, because the local boards have got all that knowledge, we've got all that local knowledge, we've got, you know, a good track record now, and we won't have any say in it. Um, so, Toby, I get the question for me is, is how can we as a council, because you talked a lot about you'll see council doing that, you'll see council doing that, this and that, um, how will we be able to contribute if we basically have a very football fields length ability to even appoint somebody, let alone have an input um, at that local level. What what can we do, especially in the area of the integrated planning and um, you know, all of the things in there that could really benefit Auckland? Kia ora, Councillor. Um, thank you for your question. And um, 
apologies again for not acknowledging your core role in particularly in the early stages of the strategy um that was an oversight on my part fantastic to have had your support through that um i think what i will do in the first instance is defer to megan tyler um on the water strategy uh, on the uh, three waters reform uh, question um just to make sure that we uh, give her the opportunity to speak there and then perhaps um i will add something um from the committee report megan but would you like to speak first there Kia ora, Toby. Thanks through the chair. Thanks for the question. Um, look, you're right, and we've had these conversations before. Uh, you'll, you'll note that there's a recommendation report that, that came out of that governance working group just in the last day or so, uh, where there is proposed changes to the ability or the amount of influence that councils will have on these new water entities and the ability to, to set direction um, or t at least to ensure that they consider um, the matters that are important to, to the community, so um, in this case the water strategy would form part of certainly what Auckland Council would bring to the table about the, the, the things that are important to, to Aucklanders and the things we need to work through and the entity needs to work through over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, Council will clearly still retain um, a number of regulatory roles in particular, so we will still be an environmental regulator. Um, there will still be the, the really critical uh, partnership uh, and work with, with iwi and mana whenua and, and Māori, Matawaka. So there are things that we will still be able to do as a council, even though, as you say, we won't have the control we have at the moment um, over the three waters. Um, so it's not ideal, but certainly from my perspective, this is still a very valuable document, something certainly worth doing, and it will, um, I still feel it will make a difference. Uh, but we will need to work that yeah. through over the coming years. Thanks. Good to hear. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Just, just to back that up, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, I agree with what Megan has said. Um, what we have achieved through the working group is a greater degree of accountability by the board of the water services entity um, to the regional representation group. Uh, and given the fact that um, this has been done with mana whenua, um, I think, you know, Auckland will have a combined majority of uh, Auckland Mana Whenua and uh, Auckland Council uh, on the RRG. And uh, I, I think the, the, the work that's been done will be put to good use. So I don't think it'll detract from it, but we won't have that exclusive control over it that um, uh, we've been fighting for. But um, we will have the ability to influence and this won't be wasted. Uh, it, it, it is in line with what... what what iwi is saying, and I think the com combination of iwi and uh, uh, and council will make sure that this strategy prevails through the RRG if we if we get to that point. Thank you. Kia ora and thank you, um, Bill, and thank you, Councillor Cooper. Did you have any other questions, or that was fine, Linda? Thank you. Uh, now, whoops, we'll go back. Uh, Councillor Dalton, next up. Tonight, quite chair. Um, kia ora, Toby. Um, thank you for this work. I've really enjoyed watching the strategy unfold. My question may have been somewhat answered, uh, and it is around what do you see any gaps um, in resourcing or in it, anywhere else to deliver on the first strategic shift of uh, the Tiriti partnership? Uh, kia ora, Councillor. Thank you. Um, do I see any gaps in delivering against that strategic shift? Um, uh, probably a couple of ways to answer that. Um, in the first instance, it's a long-term strategic direction over 30 years. So it, it gives us something to aim for. It identifies the challenges. And I think uh, if I were to define, define gaps as challenges in this way, there there is a lot of work to be done to support the treaty partner and make Council's processes and the way that we engage, and the way that the way that Council as an organisation um, identifies uh, goals together with Mana Whenua and then works towards those goals in agreed ways. So there is a big gap, I think, in achieving that strategic direction, um, if I might say it like that. So over the 30-year strategic direction of the plan, there is a lot of work to be done. I, I sense you're also asking a question around are we able to make progress against that strategic direction? Um, and I'm, I've got to say, I'm really, I'm quite heartened by my 
involvement through the water strategy. Um, I've paid particular attention to this piece of the water strategy. I've been involved and attended most 60, 70% perhaps of the iwi engagement that we undertook. And there is there's energy in the air around improving that partnership. As I said in my presentation, um, we got a lot of uh, really positive feedback around the kinds of language that we were using and the vision uh, in particular for the water strategy. But of course, that was backed up with, uh, so let's make sure that we take action together. And that's where I'm heartened to see things like the um, shoreline adaptation plan that's on the agenda later today, uh, developed in partnership. Uh, it's where I'm uh, encouraged to see the development of the national policy statement um, for freshwater management response from council, again, in that partnership approach. Uh, and I think that, you know, with things like Kyoto Tamaki Makoto, council is putting itself in a position to turn the words in the water strategy and, and our other documents in, into action. Um, but I, yeah, I don't shy away from the need to kind of provide um, sustained um, uh, resource and, and time and effort to that space as well. So, sorry, a, a long-winded answer. L lots of lots of ground to cover and 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 ground that needs to be covered in partnership. Uh, but I'm I'm really encouraged by what I see and I'm really pleased with what we've been able to land in the strategy in terms of identifying kind of key challenges and, and key actions that would would begin to address that. That was a really helpful answer. Thanks so much, Toby. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor Dalton. Uh, we have IMSB member Karen Wilson next. Kia ora, Mr Chair. Kia ora. Um, I really appreciated the um, question, Pātai, from Councillor Cooper, because aren't we all, in a certain, to a certain degree, thinking about those sorts of things? Um, and then I also very much appreciated um, Mayor Goff's corridor, um, and also Councillor Dalton, because uh, I have to say I'm I'm in excitement mode, and I shouldn't be there because we're <laughs> we're only talking uh, about the Auckland uh, the water strategy, and the excitement mode comes from knowing the work that's gone in before this paper came to us, um, including um, Councillor Cooper, and it's got us to this stage where Toby must have um, read thought about, spoken um, this in a mana whenua aspect and we all know um, that mana whenua consider that they will have a say. Now I think it would take brave indeed uh, other mana whenua or other representatives to say that this uh, Auckland strategy hasn't had some considerable input into it uh, supported by Auckland Council. Uh, very brave indeed. So um, I I had taken it as read that this was a valuable piece of work that will go some way to not giving us the perfect answer that we would wish um, as uh, in this region, um, but looking at it as as, um, as good as we can get it. Toby, I, I, I know there's a whole lot of other people. I salute you on this. I actually do have a question because I've already moved forward <laughs> on to the plan. Uh, and and what I want to know, please, it's it's got some key um, actions that will support the implement implementation plan, such as resourcing mana whenua to enable meaningful partnership relationships. And I suppose I'm just wanting to get a better understanding um, in your mind within the council group, who will be scoping these actions and who will be owning these actions. Um, and and are you thinking that it would have multiple owners, given you know, we are going through the three waters thing. What well, What's the thinking um, through here in terms of the water strategy, please? Kia ora, Member Wilson, thank you. Um, yeah, really good question. Um, so as with, as with all the actions in the uh, strategic shifts, those actions are described in uh, more detail inside the implementation plan. The actions have timeframes identified to them those timeframes uh, allow for scoping and any and, and the seeking of any funding uh, should that be required uh, and then time for delivery uh, I, I so that's that's true of all actions unless they're already underway uh, in the case of the action that you name uh, you can tell I've read the strategy back to front that's one point two um, around resourcing mana whenua uh, to enable the meaningful partnerships and relationship with council. 
Um, there's a few components to that action. Um, and the first is around simply uh, understanding engagement across council on matters of water. Now, the scoping of that particular action needs to dovetail with work that I'm already aware is underway from Namatarai, looking across engagement within the council. I'm not close enough to be able to speak to the progress of that and the and the um, the kind of scope of the, of that action, um, but clearly that is interrelated. Um, so, in answer to your question, the the first step with these actions is going to be uh, to complete the scoping and identify just what's needed. Um, to, deliver, to deliver on those actions. It will also be to refine the identification of owners. So to the kind of second point of your question, we've identified organisational owners, and for that action, it's listed as council. We have an internal understanding of the, uh, like the teams and the units that would contribute to that action, and we have provisional owners identified for those actions. I can't off the top of my head remember where we've placed that in terms of leading it, um, but I want uh, to I want to get across two messages. The, the scoping of that ownership and the scoping of the actions is still to be done and the, the detailed scoping uh, and um, we provide for that in the timeframes that are inside the implementation plan. Um, so really that's a case of uh, we'll continue to work through what that looks like uh, in order to deliver it. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Kia ora. Kia ora, Member Wilson. Thank you. And thank you for your support the whole way through um, this process as well. It's been very, um, very good to have you around our table, um, your table too. Um, many tables at the moment at home. Um, the uh, next question is Councillor Walker. Uh, sure. I've, I've just got a, a general question first, Mr Chair, that goes to the presentation around a number of um, agenda items and the attachments. And the attachment reports for somebody reading them on their um, computer are 90 degrees out of whack. Um, it's actually quite difficult for members of the public um, generally, given that they're reading these sorts of things online, to often deal with these matters. It's incredibly user unfriendly, I mean incredibly. So I just make a plea to um, officers, can they make the simple change to realign presentations so that they are readable? Um, can someone answer me that question? It's not directed at Toby, it's generated to whoever is putting these agendas together so that they're as readable and as accessible as possible. Yeah, um, Wayne, I was, we will ensure um, that Suad gets back to the team that just to, for a cursory look over agendas before they go out if they can be all flipped um, the other way. On, uh, on Nexus, it's very easy to flip them and most computers can, but granted, I understand what you mean, that it's not an easy look to go to travel down the agenda and having to switch the, the view. So very good point there, but we will we will ensure that so I'd get that back to the rest of the governance team and, and we'll try and make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, That'd be great. If someone can get if someone can get through to me specifically, I'd like to target this as a simple work item, um, yeah. Mr. Chair. Um, I would really appreciate that. So um, I've just got a few questions on the um, water uh, strategy. Um, so uh, is it possible, Toby, to include information that other cities include in their water strategies that um, would include diagrammatic representation of a catchment based approach, um, showing the different water sources, for example, um, uh, rainwater and and the like, because none of those things are obvious in um, what I read. Uh, and I have emphasized this before. So can we incorporate that uh, material so that an Aucklander or somebody reading the strategy can see one, where the water is coming from based on a catchment based approach, which is fundamentally what the water sensitive cities approach is all about. It's a catchment based approach. And then also to show where the water goes. So in terms of sources, that would include Rainwater, stormwater, obviously aquifer uh, water and um, and the like, and 
and so on. It should also incorporate di diagrammatically other water sensitive cities. Um, approaches around the water cycle, around water balance. So can we can we incorporate those things, Toby? Uh, kia ora, Councillor. Thank you for that question. Um, and you're right. You've 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 raised that um, once in our in our workshops as well. So the way that the way that we've approached that question of um, if I if I sort of refer to that as um, almost uh, the educational element um, or the you know uh, our ability to increase kind of Aucklanders water literacy within the water strategy itself, we, the way that we've approached that is in order to keep the water strategy. Uh, I'll use the word short, but I'm sure um, some committee members would look at a 35, 40 page report and think. Mm. <laughs> so we've managed to keep it down by uh, taking the approach that the educational and sort of supporting information be housed in supporting documents that we add to over time. Um, and so that's why you don't see things like the hydrological cycle that you that you raised there. So just to explain why it isn't in there. Um, we do have uh, space within the document that you see appended to the uh, agenda um, for a map showing the sources um, uh, for Auckland's water. And also we're actually showing the river courses as well across the region. Um, and that's just going through some final checks from our GIS team. I think it's page four in the water strategy. Right now you'll just see a blank in the attachment. So uh, some of what you're asking for there is addressed in that map. Um, and then I really I would I'd take the guidance of the committee as to whether or not uh, it wishes to see um, some more of that, if I just use the term, so say more educational content, if it wishes to see that kind of moved into the strategy. I, I, I hadn't received that feedback um, on the final uh, strategy version circulated to the committee, so I haven't included it up, up until this point. Okay. So I'll take um, the guidance of the committee on that. Through you, Mr Chair, by way of question, the information that I would suggesting in terms of diagrammatic um, form is incredibly basic. Um, for example, um, by way of question, the fundamental shift that's occurring within Auckland's water is that we are increasingly unsustainable and are drawing more and more water from outside the catchment from the Waikato at huge cost and lack of resilience. So that sort of information can be expressed incredibly easily diagrammatically. I think that, I mean, sure you can parcel this stuff in some form of education, education mm. form elsewhere, but really that's not adequate. And I mean, all you've got to do is look at any other, um, look at City of Melbourne, for example. I mean, it's it's all there and I've pointed that out, that out many times before. So I've got an outstanding question, Mr. Chair, around that. Yeah, the I'll, other I'll just just to loop in, you finish that off. I think uh, we because the feedback didn't come back uh, last time or, or when Toby sent it out, we it won't be on there today. But what Toby did say that the strategy is designed to be added to, so we may be able to put something uh, as an attachment or or something over over time. I, I don't want to just have some maps to sort of you know, it's not as easy as just throwing throwing down. Uh, Toby, oh, yeah. is that correct though? We could add something. That yeah, if, point. if I might, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor, excuse me, um, Mr. Chair, uh -huh. um, I think perhaps the, the sort of the, the neatest solution in this case um, would be to pursue the, the, the route of the supporting document. Um, so yep. we have a number of supporting documents that provide kind of ex explanations around core concepts within the water strategy. And, and those are the um, the documents that I'm referring to when I say that we can sort of add to this over time. So. Um, I think that would be a, a, an excellent suggestion. It would um, take a bit of work on our end, but we, we have much of that information that Councillor Walker is uh, referring to uh, in information that we shared with the committee previously. We would just need to, um, you know, work that up into a public facing um, document appropriate to kind of spread that message and, and, and provide that um, educational content. So that, that could be something that we, um, that we uh, action is creating a supporting document there to cover those, those matters raised. Perfect. Thanks, Toby. We'll add that to um, our work program or something to ensure it's looped off um, for sure. for all of us. And thanks, um, Wayne. Your yeah. next question. The other question I've got just around the um, consumption targets. Um, 
uh, quite obviously, the council has a requirement to um, reduce its uh, emissions by zero by 2050. Um, uh, New Zealand as a whole and, and Auckland is woeful. In fact, our emissions are going the opposite way. They're going up. Given the um, embodied um, carbon in uh, water by way of energy and, and the like, do these consumption targets in any way go near meeting our climate change um, targets, particularly if you um, mm. recognise that water consumption is directly related to um, um, sewage and energy use and, and, and the like. They're correlated phenomenally. So have you done any uh, analysis on that, um, Toby? If the answer is no, then that's an answer, but um, yeah. Kia Councillor. Well, just firstly to acknowledge um, that we have Greer Lees on the call who, who can add some detail here, but but also to um, to agree with the point that you've just made that, uh, you know, there's a phenomenal, I don't know, the phenomenal, there's energy involved in um, the uh, conveyance of water, uh, including drinking and, and wastewater, and that the reduction of uh, drinking water in the system uh, and by association, some reduction in wastewater in the system uh, is a lever to reduce the amount of energy used within that network. And so uh, the consumption targets that we propose uh, and the reduction of per capita consumption of water over time is one uh, lever uh, to mitigate the energy that's required for that for that system. Um, and then the, the other point, of course, to make is that climate change will be affecting uh, the sources uh, that we currently use. Uh, and the so through the you know, frequency and the severity of, of weather events, and uh, it will be affecting the demand on those sources, uh, warmer days, demand peaks, and so on. Um, and so uh, again, the reduction in per capita demand over time, uh, particularly when we think about a growing population over time, uh, becomes a really important um, strategy and, and lever when we think about mitigating and adapting to climate change. Um, I'll, I'll just see if Greer wants to add anything to that. Um, I'll just provide a bit of context, allowing her to kind of think through that question. Greer, you're on the call. Is there anything further that you'd add uh, to Councillor Walker's question there? Kia ora, Toby. Um, kia ora, Councillor Walker. Just to add um, that there is also a specific action in there in the year one to three t time frame, um, and it's in shift five, uh, that is a is a an action to, to be done with water care on on basically a water emissions reduction plan similar to the the fact that we're working on a transport emissions reduction plan okay um just got one other question mr chair and that goes to um, implementation strategies i have raised earlier and i've raised these points on a number of occasions in uh, workshops that um, Auckland Council and Watercare could integrate um, more closely with the Water Sensitive Cities Network, with the good work that they do out of uh, Monash, uh, that Monash that we enter into a partnership, partnership arrangement with uh, Auckland University and AUT and the like to effectively have a, a form of Water Sensitive Cities unit in Auckland. Um, that needn't cost Auckland Council much um, at all. I think those other parties would be more than welcome to um, take that up. Is it possible to actually have that as an implementation item so that we're actually walking the talk? Thanks. Yep, I'll take that as a as a comment. I think no, it is a it is a question. I've raised it before. I'm, I'm raising yep. it again. Can we incorporate that as an implementation item? Uh, Toby, I'm not, I mean, they, Toby has engaged very, a lot, you know, quite considerably with the water sensitive cities, but also important to acknowledge that the the, the importance of the uh, Matauranga Māori as assessment of it, because just simply laying the water sensitive cities, which is a global tool across Tamaki, wasn't uh, the right thing to do and, and mana whenua weren't, uh, keen on us to do that. So we've done both. Toby, did you want to talk about uh, or respond quickly to Councillor Walker? 
Uh, just to say that, um, you know, the, the, the team would agree with your position there. Um, there's a piece in the strategy explaining the water sensitive city uh, framework, the work at Monash and the, um, the ability for Auckland Council to kind of engage with that international network. I mean, that's a key driver um, why, for us uh, at Council undertaking that benchmarking so that we could um, kind of access, collaborate, coordinate with that international community. So absolutely agree. Uh, in, inside the, uh, we called it the pooling knowledge um, strategic shift, um, we talk about uh, developing external partnerships um, for innovation, research and development. Uh, and there's a little more information in the implementation plan. Um, I will make sure that the implementation plan references the ongoing partnership with uh, water sensitive cities. And um, it's certainly the intention um, of the water strategy to revisit that benchmarking over time, for instance, and, and have an ongoing um, relationship with that network. So um, yeah, I think we would just support those comments and, and make sure that that's clear uh, in the implementation plan. Kia ora, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Toby. Thanks, Councillor Walker. Uh, Councillor Darby, next up. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks, Toby. Hey, um, great work, and we're we're at a great great landing point here. Um, I'm looking at the strategy, Toby, and I'm looking at the governance of Auckland, and it refers to the core council. It doesn't refer to the CCO responsibilities in, in governance. Look, that's a, that's a small thing, but a large thing. And it leads me to my question. Um, impatient for um, action on this, that is, you know, we get into the delivery mode of the strategy now, the strategy being uh, built upon the vision. Um, so can you just outline how the strategy is going to be socialised with uh, probably not just so much our organisation. I'd probably like you to dwell on the CCOs. And rather than take the water care example, I'd like you to take the Auckland transport example. 25% of urban Auckland is acres of asphalt. It's impervious. It has an opportunity for us, as we well know. So how is this going to be socialised in a meaningful way that leads to short-term change and long-term change uh, at Auckland Transport? How are we going to see uh, impermeability addressed quickly um, where it's currently not being addressed in like-for-like uh, you know, renewal programs or designs of roundabouts that are sealed off with asphalt and concrete and could be gardens or tree pits, et cetera. Uh, I, I'm interested in, in how you could just take us through how with that particular CCO, this is going to be socialised and we will start to see change. Uh, kia ora, Councillor Darby. Um, really excellent question. Um, we don't we don't have um, to answer your um, your question most directly. We don't have a, a confirmed um, plan around socialising the strategy outside of sharing the strategy uh, and and some internal comms that we're, well, we we do have some internal comms planned. And I think what you're getting at is um, some more sort of face-to-face -face conversations around um, how we embed the strategic direction in, in some of the work programs and decision making in, in CCOs such as um, Auckland Transport. Um, I, ju I would just make the point that uh, the water strategy uh, has involved um, staff from Auckland Transport, Panuku, Water Care, um, both in workshops and developing the strategic directions uh, and in the benchmarking that we just spoke of in the, in the previous question. Um, and so the development of the strategic direction and the actions themselves um, were appropriate, have, have had input from across the council group. Um, and so in the delivery of actions is the first opportunity to involve uh, staff from CCOs um, in the implementation of those actions inside the implementation plan. Um, and for that, we do have a, a plan. Uh, we're working through, as I answered uh, Member Wilson's question earlier, a scoping phase on those actions. Um, but I think you're raising a really important question, which is um, how this is reflected in mechanisms such as statements of intent um, and, and how we work through uh, making sure that our um, CCO uh, and, the, and the broader council family 
uh, respond to the strategic direction and the strategy? Uh, and I, I think it's a good question and one that we need to um, keep thinking through there. Um, heartened that we uh, have uh, the chief of strategy on the project and, um, and, and, and her role uh, in, in sharing the strategic direction that, we've, uh, that we may adopt today. Thanks, I'll leave that one there, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Dowdy. Uh, last, oh, uh, second to last, uh, Mayor Goff, question. Oh, look, uh, I'll, I've got a comment. I have my hand up for a comment um, that I'd like to just develop a little in answer to Linda Cooper's question. So I'll follow uh, Daniel if that's the last question under comment. Thanks, Mr Chair. Perfect, thanks, Mayor. Uh, question, Councillor Newman. Yes, good morning, uh, Richard, and thank you. Um, my question to officers is just following on from the response that they've just given to Chris Darby. Um, we know that we're not going to have control of the new water entity. Um, and in relation to Auckland Transport, our ability to um, direct the uh, decision making around investment within Auckland Transport is pretty well limited to the SOI. And we know that the stormwater assets that um, are really important here are primarily located within the road corridor owned by Auckland Transport. And finally, um, we know that under the new permissive planning framework for um, residential development and intensification, et cetera, where backyards are being subdivided, um, much of that we're sort of relying upon um, resource consent conditions, which are, are pretty permissible to the developer, but don't necessarily put the environmental consequences or infrastructure consequences at the heart of the debate. So taking all these things into account, actually our ability to, to have any sort of meaningful intervention uh, in relation to how we design stormwater within road corridors uh, and within communities that connect into those road corridors is extremely limited, isn't it? The, the, yes, we're talking about, uh, well, we've got a scoping exercise for communication with, this, with, with our CCOs internally and we'll have these debates, but in reality, we don't have any, any mandate to be able to direct on this matter, do we? And probably our ability will become even less um, as we move through the transition to three waters, is that correct? Through the chair, Toby, I'm happy to take this, um, if that's okay. Thank you for the question, Councillor Newman. The strategy points also, at its heart, fundamentally, this strategy also requires a change in relationship and a change in partnership and a kind of a change in the way we do things. Yes, within the organisation and the group, um, but also, you know, across across Tamaki Makoto, because it's not just Auckland Council having actions, um, you know, it's it's individuals and businesses and, and all of that kind of thing. And as some of the other questions have raised, it, it also links to our climate action, which is, again, fundamentally a social and behaviour change process that's going to happen over the next decade or two. So I'm probably not going to be able to answer your question and, and be clear that, it's no problem. We'll we'll be able to you know influence and control all sorts of things. But what I am clear about is that this strategy points to a a different way of working for us as a group, and it's a challenge that you've laid down, um, and that I, I'm very aware that that we have is to see exactly can, how we how we kind of make decisions and the decisions we make as a as a council group are the right ones and are pointing in the right direction, particularly around Tamodi or Tiwai. So it's a real challenge, councillor. Um, I, I can't answer you to say we will, you know, we've nailed it or we will nail it, but that is kind of part of the fundamental underlying, really, in my view, of this strategy as well. Thank you, councillor Newman, and thank you, Megan. Um, that is all the questions. We'll go straight to Mayor Goff for comment, then councillor Newman, and anyone else who'd like to. Uh, speak. So, Mayor Goff, you were cutting out again. So, if um, okay. I guess just I'll, warning you that I'll put my hand up if you disappear completely and maybe you'll be able to see that. But yeah. 
Hopefully. Yeah, it's it's time the rural dwellers in uh, in Auckland get a better uh, broadband. Um, yeah. If if it is cutting out, I'll I'll turn the camera off. Maybe I should do that um, anyway. Actually, Mr. Chair, that might that might help. Look, it is an answer to both what um, uh, Councillor Daniel Newman has said and and Linda Cooper. And I thought I'd just give this the first opportunity to give a, a very brief uh, account of where we're at in terms of the working group recommendations and how that would impact on what the strategy we're about to pass might actually uh, end up doing. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get the outcome that I sought in terms of Auckland Council majority control. Uh, we did get an outcome where we've got 90% membership uh, and that's set down in a shareholding. Um, but we did get some considerable increase in the accountability of the water services entity to the regional representation group. So um, it's moved more towards a CCO model. Um, there is now going to be a statement of strategic and performance expectation, um, which will, which the water services entity will have to quote give effect to. So the same, the same words as in the CCO uh, legislation. Uh, we'll also, this is providing the government approves the recommendations of the working group. Um, they, uh, we also have the power to approve the statement of intent. And we also have the power to directly appoint and remove board members. So in some ways, the the regional representation group will have similar powers to, to what we have. The difference is we don't make up 100% of it um, because of the nature of um, uh, the co-governance set out and the other councils involved. Um, what I did get out of it, um, there are 14 members um, that will be on the RRG, four of which are Auckland Council. And that gives us a 28% um, say, which is important because we've also approved that majority decision making will apply, which has to be 75%. So we have a blocking vote so that if there are things that we don't like happening, uh, we can stop them. Um, also, as well as four Auckland Council members, there will be four Auckland iwi members. So Auckland will have the predominant voice in the regional representation group. But undoubtedly, this makes the process a little more complex. We'll have to work more for through persuasion uh, of the people that we're working with, rather than simply being able to say, this is our water strategy and this is what should apply. But I have no doubt that given the way that Toby and his team have put this water strategy together, um, the, the Auckland Mana Whenua will be supportive of that. And, and therefore, that will be part of what the new water services entity will need to give effect to. So in short, Mr Chair, um, worthwhile being on the working group, uh, even though it was you know 12 days of my life that I'll never get back. Um, and I was uh, persistently in a minority uh, of one on, uh, on a key issue, uh, but we have got improvements and that should lead us to have confidence uh, that this water strategy will um, continue to have effect on the water services entity that would be will be set up if three waters goes ahead. So I, I hope that that builds a little bit on Megan's answer and I hope that um, that is uh, of use to to councillors. Thank you. Good, Amir, and we heard you perfectly and thanks again for your work on um, that grouping of people. And I know there was frustrations there, but I think there have been uh, big leaps forward, some that uh, unfortunately could have been sorted out from the beginning because a lot of the points were our points from the beginning. But um, uh, hopefully the government will listen now. Uh, comment, uh, we have Councillor Newman. Yeah, look, thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, my best wishes to the Mayor is, is sounding, sound, I hope he's sounding better. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I, I appreciate the, the remarks that he's made. It goes some way to addressing the, the points that I wanted to raise. I think there's a very strong argument for uh, certainly horizontal integration for water and wastewater, but the but the the out there really is a stormwater, and that's that largely is actually um, goes to the heart of how one implements the strategy uh, for um, a better conservation um, of water um, using stormwater design and redesign um, to give effect to good environmental outcomes and. 
Megan, I really want to acknowledge you and the officers um, for the work that you've done in this space, but there are two main risks here. Um, firstly, I'm not sure that stormwater uh, excites the attention of anybody who's working in the three waters space, to be honest, at this point, because I don't think they understand it. Um, certainly, that I don't think that there is an appreciation of how significantly integrated stormwater and transport is because most of the stormwater infrastructure certainly from a conveyance perspective is in the road corridor and secondly in relation to housing uh, there is no doubt that there is a significant risk uh, with the move from permeable to non-permeable surfaces uh, as we you know pour concrete all over Auckland to build house upon house upon house um, that there is really no appreciation for the environmental consequences of that. Um, I think that the, the risk remains that um, that um, is the strategy being integrated or is it ultimately going to be decoupled from implementation, um, you know, by our CCOs? Uh, one, because we don't actually have the ability to have that much control over Auckland Transport, and two, um, the ability for Auckland Transport, which we don't directly control, to interface with an entity for which we will, you know, uh, notwithstanding what the Mayor said, um, will be largely um, controlled by its own its own management and reporting devices. So um, I, I do want to acknowledge the officers, so I think that they have, um, you know, really tried hard and, and made a very genuine uh, attempt at writing a very reasonable and considered document, notwithstanding the environment within which uh, this debate is being had around um, control of three waters. I certainly think there's a very strong argument for decoupling of of, of stormwater from, from this new entity, because ultimately it sits at the heart of, of some of the work that the council needs to be doing um, as an environmental steward. Thank you, Chair. Good, thank you, Councillor Newman. Um, and very well-considered points that you've um, continued to uh, voice over the last year or so on, on this issue, and even longer. Uh, oh, we have a, I was about to finish up, but Councillor Darby, comment. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chair. Look, I won't repeat the comments about um, the, um, the possible transfer of stormwater into the three waters entity that might or may not turn up, but um, um, it's a, 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 a dislocation that I have uh, extreme concerns about too. But look, I just want to come back to what we're discussing here today at the core. And uh, firstly, I do want to acknowledge the long journey that's been taken here, Chair, Deputy Chair, Toby, Megan, many others. Um, but dangerous to start the name calling, isn't it? But look, hey, at last, we've actually got a water strategy. We're about to uh, put over the line and adopt a, a water strategy Te Māori o Te Wai. It's, it's a pretty amazing accomplishment today. And, um, you know, we've had the vision for a while. We've thought about it for a long time before that. But uh, as we know, visions are somewhat empty unless you have a mechanism to deliver on that vision, hence the strategy. Um, and then the strategy needs legs. Um, it needs those clear actions and responsibilities, and that's what's contained here. We've, that, we've got that, but we uh, also need the monitoring and we need to get motoring. Um, so we're all going to have to be pretty keen, uh, have a keen eye, be on the lookout for ensuring that this strategy is not just considered by various parts of our organisation, uh, but that it is actually genuinely brought to life um, and that it's reflected on honestly not in a cursory way. Now, now, I say that, Chair, as Chair of Planning, because I know at times strategic documents are viewed in a cursory way. Uh, they, uh, they, the, people extract the convenient parts and do that part and ignore the more inconvenient part to achieving their particular outcome. So I guess that is that's what drove my question to Toby and I gave the example of Auckland Transport. It's not for me to home in on Auckland Transport here. I'm just highlighting it as an example. There is tremendous opportunity in the Auckland Transport area of responsibility. 
to make vast improvements in water outcomes. Um, and I'll be very watchful through my liaison councillor role to see how they are tracking to reflect on this water strategy and understand it and embed it in their practices. If we see that, we will see change quite quickly in some areas of the strategy. But like the Climate Action Plan, there is some urgency to deliver on this. And I think we're all going to have to be watchful, alert and calling out um, just as we have on other strategic directions that this and other committees have made for us in our city. I want to finish by acknowledging again everybody that's participated in this. This is very large work for the city. It's it's very much the city shaping uh, document that we need and we're about to confirm it. Thanks, Chair. Chair Councillor, thank you very much for those comments. Uh, Deputy Chair, Councillor Coon. O tēnā koe te hia mana, um, Councillor Hills, tēnā koutou, nā mihi nui, kia koutou. And I just wanted to add my acknowledgements in speaking in support of adopting the Auckland Water Strategy today and um, to thank the team, Toby, Greer, um, Georgie and everybody who's worked on this going back over um, many years have built the foundations for the strategy. Um, do really appreciate all of that hard mahi that's gone into it and the collaborative approach across the Auckland Council Fano. Um, also just in speaking in support, um, it's not that long ago, well speaking in support and also reflecting on the need for this strategy and it's been, I've enjoyed the korero that we've had around the table um, on the strategy and its origins and the need for it is it wasn't that long ago that we had um, plans and approaches that were diametrically opposed to um, what we're trying to achieve with this strategy in terms of te Māori or te wai and the life sustaining capacity of water is protected and enhanced and particularly thinking about um, the lack of consumption targets and just the endless growth that we were previously planning for and growth in the consumption of water. I mean, that's just one aspect of it. And also, of course, the ongoing de degradation of our environment um, and the water surrounding us. And I'm particularly thinking of the Hauraki Gulf and wearing my potai as co-chair of the Hauraki Gulf Forum. So just to see this all come together, um, really do um, acknowledge the importance of the strategy and and why it's needed and the pathway that it puts us on. Um, I also just wanted to add a quick reflection on um, the positivity that IMSB member Karen Walker spoke about and I think she said it was excited at this, this work and the strategy and um, we've been hearing a lot of negativity about three waters and I've been receiving a lot of negativity about the changes we're trying to bring to the, the Haraki Gulf Forum as well. Um, a lot of misinformation in that space. Um, but this strategy um, really is exciting and I think it's time now to actually be uh, moving into that sort of next step in terms of the implementation about how working together will bring us a huge amount of benefits. And I'm seeing that, for example, in the rahui that we're having around the, the Gulf, when we work in partner partnership with mana whenua, just the transformation and the action that is possible. And the this water strategy picks up on that as well. And so, you know, I'm, I'm excited too about how um, this, this puts us on a new pathway and I think there's a lot for us to all collectively learn from, from this strategy and I look forward to having those conversations and just greater, deeper understanding about how we are going to work with, with mana whenua on this strategy because I do think there's a huge amount to gain. A lot of people fear mongering that this is sort of taking something away, losing control, um, and but actually 
um, when we look at what we're trying to achieve with Tamori or to white, there's there's I can see just huge benefits and um, transformation. So um, thank you again, and I do commend um, the resolution today. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to um, front the strategy alongside you. Um, I really appreciate that being up front in the strategy. So kia ora, namahi nui kia koutou. Kia ora, Deputy Chair, uh, Councillor Kerman. Thank you for all your work on this and taking the baton very um, strongly when I was on leave for Theo. And um, that's why it was important that both of us are there and the chairs forward as a joint uh, message as well because of all the work um, that, that you did leading um, the strategy as well. Um, and also, uh, although you might not have noticed, but you said Karen Walker, the jewellery and clothing designer, instead of member Karen Wilson, I'm sure. Uh, member Wilson didn't mind though. Um, the uh, for me, this is this is a huge piece of work. So thank you so much uh, again to Toby, Jacques, the whole team, um, Megan, and every every uh, staff member who's worked on this uh, strategy. It has been complicated. It has been pulling all our strategies together and pulling them back apart and learning along the way. I know that the um, you know there was a lot of push to focus. Uh, specifically on water sensitive cities as the benchmarking tool, but um, Toby and team in speaking with the Mana Whenua Kaitiaki Forum and individual Mana Whenua members, you realised that it was more important to get a benchmarking system um, that had a Mā Tauranga Māori focus and an actual uh, Tāmaki Makoto focus first and foremost to ensure that, yes, we could bench our, benchmark ourselves against other cities, but it was important to have that Tamaki Makoto flavour and ensure we were working uh, in partnership with Mana Whenua on such an important part of, well, the life force of our our city and 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 the people who live here, um, which is the um, the water. So um, I just want to appreciate that 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 took a little longer than maybe we planned at the beginning, but it's so crucial that it was done in the way it was um, done. And and as Member Wilson has said uh, she's been pleased with that process and and many others have spoken to that as well. So, um, yeah, I just want to say that it's it's been a fan fantastic process uh, from that point of view. I do want to touch on what others have spoken about is that it feels like a shame that we have this fantastic strategy, but technically we potentially won't be the ones driving it. But I think that is um, maybe looking to the, the, the negative of what I think the strategy is uh, and I hope that any new entity that takes takes over or or becomes the the one the ones implementing the infrastructure take this and see this as our sort of benchmark our our you know doorstop. This is what we want for our city. This is this is what we expect. And hopefully they'll <laughs> see it as a bit of a quick win. Okay, we don't have to write our own uh, strategy for Tamaki Makoto. We can take this on board. But I think the work is so fulsome and so, um, you know, there's a lot here that they should be using as a resource uh, for this new entity. And I think with the changes hopefully coming uh, from our advocacy and from the Mayor's advocacy, hopefully we will have more of a say than we thought we were going to have. And we will be able to keep uh, the new entity on us through this water strategy and actually have something that backs it up with evidence and a process as opposed to just things we assume we want um, in, in the water space for for Tamaki Makoto. So I think also for the CCOs, they will need to pick this up as a strategy, much like um, the Tarakia um, that, that is that is crucial. Um, and the other thing is the going back to the targets, we forget what, what happens along the way. I think we think about the the drought and, and, and the concerns we had about that, the fact that Chris's um, the planning committee and others We've got the plan change now for uh, no more resource consents for uh, tanks. We've got those consumption targets that um, Councillor Cooper and Watercare really, you know, Councillor Cooper backed us up um, and our our staff up working with Watercare on ensuring that those targets were reduced to a, a place that was sustainable and was considering climate and was considering uh, the infrastructure. So going forward, those asset management plans will be written with that in mind and those aims and targets. And also, as one of Auckland's biggest uh, uh, water users, we will need to be ensuring we are staying true to the water strategy and reducing um, our water use and being 
uh, creative in that response as well as, as we go. And, and there's all the planning tools as well um, that aren't necessarily just about the water infrastructure. Um, I, I think there is some shame in, in, in the fact that stormwater is still being included in this three waters process. I, I think it's obvious that that a uh, water entity includes water supply and water um, and wastewater as utilities. But I do think there is an issue that we're going to find um, trying to to have the stormwater system that goes in our streets and our parks and the decision makers right across our city and the importance of that and those that new blue green infrastructure and fewer pipes and more uh, wetlands and rivers and, and the things that improve the water quality of our beaches and harbors that we need to maintain um, that sort of control and that sort of um, that push there. So I think there is a concern that stormwater gets left out when I believe it's one of the most important uh, pieces that we need to have a say over. So just uh, once again, I think everyone said everything that needs to be said. Um, this is a fantastic strategy and it will be added to. And I think that I just want to appreciate all of you for getting involved and really, um, you know, that times the workshops were were very detailed and there was a lot of information, but you all really jumped on board and saw it as an important part to to move forward as, as a city. So um, yes. All those in favour? Aye. 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 And, is there, and is there anyone opposed to adopting the strategy? Perfect. I'll have that carried unanimously, please, Suad, if that's all right. Thank you very much. And we will move on to... We'll move on to too much water, and I think we can have a break after 